Hi everyone, I'm Nick Olivo, and today we're going to continue our discussion on setting up dynamic lighting. Specifically, we'll discuss making it so that walls block players' movement, how to reset explorer mode back to the original state, and we'll also discuss how to set up magical darkness. Before we dive in, I'd just like to thank Roll20 for sponsoring this video. So the first thing we're going to discuss is how to set up walls so that they block tokens' movement. Here you're seeing my player's view, and I can grab my token and just step right through the wall of this dungeon. Unless you're running an X-Men game and one of your players happens to be Shadowcat, you probably don't want them to be able to do this. So here I am back in my GM view, and what I'm going to do is go up to the page toolbar here, find my page, go to page settings, and on the page details tab, we're going to turn on dynamic lighting barriers restrict movement. So we'll turn that on, save settings, and then as the GM, I can move people through walls and through barriers and things like that. But if I switch back to my player's view, you can see now I can't drag my token beyond the boundaries that the walls create. So that setting is going to prevent our players from doing things like stepping through doors, walls, or other obstructions that we've set up on the dynamic lighting layer. So now let's talk about Explorer Mode. And you may remember from last time, Explorer Mode is what allows players to see where they've been in the dungeon. And if we look in my player view, you can see my player has explored this dungeon pretty extensively. And we have this record of where he's been. And that's great. But maybe we want to reset this back to the default state of not seeing anything. Maybe my player has left the dungeon and is now coming back the next day, so I don't want him to remember where he's been. Or maybe he's been hit with some kind of a confusion spell or an amnesia spell or something like that, and I want him to forget where he's been. We can absolutely do that. To reset the explorer mode back to the default, that is, having nothing explored, what you want to do is, as the GM, you go to this toolbar button right here, and you want to make sure that explorable darkness is selected. And then just come down here to reset explorable darkness. Click that. You're going to get this confirmation box that says, are you sure you want to hide currently explored areas? We're going to click reset fog there. And there you go. Now the map is back to its default state. My player no longer sees where he's been. He only has those areas where he currently has line of sight. Of course, as the character starts moving through, as Sir Holy McRighteous here starts walking through the corridors again, you can see that Explorer Mode is again remembering where the player has been, so that is still working. It's just now we're back to the uh, default state of not having anything previously explored be visible. Now, in addition, this toolbar button also allows us to create areas of permanent darkness. That is, areas that cannot be seen through regardless of what kind of vision or light is set up on the token or in the dungeon. So I'm going to just use the permanent darkness here. I'm going to say hide areas, and I'm going to use the rectangle tool to draw a square that my player won't be able to see through. So we're just going to draw right here this box. You can see it's drawing the gray shade as I go along here. Now you see on my player view that we now have that black box. So as my player, if I move over, you see that nothing changes as I get closer to it. I can't see through this. I can step into the square. I can't see anything inside the square. So I don't know if there are monsters there or traps. I have no way of knowing. And to kind of illustrate that a little bit further, I'm going to just grab a monster real fast here. Let's put a skeleton in here. I'm just going to drag my skeleton on onto an adjacent square. Okay, so I as the GM can see this skeleton just fine, but my player has no idea that that skeleton is there. So this allows you to create effects like magical darkness that your players can't see through. And of course, if Sir Holy McRighteous here casts Dawn or Daylight or some other spell that's going to dispel the magical darkness, all you need to do is go to Permanent Darkness, Reveal Areas, and then draw another box, and now he has a skeleton to fight. 
Now, for all you warlocks out there who have Devil's Sight, you may be wondering, well, hey, is there a way to set this up so that the warlock token can see through the magical darkness? And the answer is not right now. Um, that may be something that gets implemented in the future. If it is, I'll do a video about it. But for right now, there isn't a way to have a token see through the permanent darkness. So while we can't see in magical darkness, we can go the other direction and cause our characters to go blind if we want them to. So we've all been there, the characters get hit with blindness deafness, or maybe there's some sort of a trap effect that causes them to temporarily lose sight. We can achieve that. All you need to do is double click on the token, I'll scoot this guy to the left a little bit here, and then just turn off their vision, save it, and now watch the player view. Okay, explorer mode is still there, so our player like has a rough map in their head of where they've been and what the surrounding area looks like, but they can't see the skeleton anymore. So even though it was right next to them, they don't know where that skeleton is. And that makes for a much more immersive and much scarier experience, I think, because now maybe you have the player make perception checks to figure out where the monsters are, or you know they, they feel the hot breath of the zombie coming in, or they can hear the skeleton clacking, but they can't see exactly where that is. And so I think that makes for a much more engaging game, and ultimately one that's a lot more fun. And of course, when the effect wears off, just double click on the token again, Turn the site back on, save settings, and ah, there's a skeleton, and go from there. Now, if you have a pro account and have access to the API, you can use the token mod script to create a macro that will automatically blind or restore a token site as you wish. And you can see right here, I've got a macro like that. I'm just going to scoot this over. Basically, all this is doing is telling token mod to set the token's bright vision off. So if I select this token here and then click text macro, you can see, there we go, my token has lost sight. And then if I click on the restore site macro that I have here, it's basically doing the exact same thing, only it's setting the bright vision to on. We'll uh, test that macro. And you can see the character has their site back. So very easy to create those macros. I'll put those down in the description below so you'll have them if you want. And that'll just make the game run smoother because now you're doing this with just the touch of a button. One final setting that I do want to talk about is up in the page toolbar here. If we go onto our page settings and onto dynamic lighting, you'll notice there's this GM darkness opacity. You probably noticed that when you turned dynamic lighting on on the page, your map got a bit of a tint to it. And that tint may interfere with your ability to see things. So you can reduce the amount of the opacity here. Just drag this to the left, save settings, and now it's a bit brighter on the map for you as the DM. That does not change how your player sees the dynamic lighting. So you notice I've made it a lot brighter for myself, but the dungeon is still just as dim from my player standpoint. And so if I bring those settings back, if I scoot this over again, and I change that slider again, and I take it you know, all the way down to say nothing, save settings, this map is now really bright, nothing has changed from the player standpoint. So that's really just a, a matter of your own preference there, what you're comfortable with and what works for you. I think I like having the opacity up to about the default value, which was around 35%, uh, because then it just reminds me that there is darkness on this map because not all my maps have that. And so this is kind of a, just a nice way to keep that visually going on that I know there is dynamic lighting on this particular map. So there you have it, a few more dynamic lighting settings that you can use to make your game more immersive. If you've got dynamic lighting tips that you'd like to share, throw them on down in the comments. And in the meantime, folks, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time, have a great day.